In the Valley of the Kings, there are over 60 graves that have yielded incredible wealth and archaeological treasures. Recently, a team of Swiss archaeologists discovered a new tomb that is distinct from the other tombs in the valley. Hello viewers! In this video, we will talk about the tomb of an 800,000-year-old queen that was found in Egypt. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates. Let's get started. Instead of a Kanyur queen, the tomb belonged to a female vocalist named Bassett. We are going to figure out what the mystery is that lies behind the most significant finding made in the last hundred years. On January 25, 2011, a team of archaeologists led by Susan Vickel of the University of Basel in Switzerland made one of the most important discoveries of the last century. They found the top of a large round stone at the east end of the Valley of the Kings. The valley is located on the west bank of the Nile directly across from what was once Egypt's spiritual center at the bottom of the shaft. This is the first time a tomb has been found with a woman who was not related to royalty. They discovered shards of pottery fashioned from the silt of the Nile, as well as fragments of plaster, which is typically employed for the purpose of capping tube entrances. The plaster pieces and the ages of other nearby sites were the first signs that the shaft might actually be a tomb dating back to between 1539 and 1292 BCE during Egypt's 18th dynasty. Stones blocked the entrance, but there was a small hole big enough for a small digital camera to fit through. Michael said that she had never seen an Egyptian coffin in such good shape before the age of pieces of pottery made from Nile silk and pieces of plaster that were used to seal tomb entrances in ancient times. Egyptologists believe that the person who lived in the tomb was named Nimes Bassett. The color and hieroglyphics on the coffin match a style from between 945 BC and 715 BC, which is at least 350 years after the tomb was built. The coffin shows that the tomb was used more than once, which was common during that time. People have been stating that there is nothing fresh left to find in the Valley of the Kings for almost as long as they have been digging there. This has been going on for quite some time, before Florentine could remove Nimes Bassett's coffin from the burial chamber for further study. They had to open it to make sure that nothing inside would be damaged when it was moved. It took a professional restorer a day to take out the nails that were holding the coffin together. Giovanni Belzumi, an archaeologist from the nation, believed that he had found all of the valley's tombs during his 1817 expedition. They discovered a female mummy that stood five feet tall and had been carefully wrapped, despite the fact that it had only been discovered a short time before the sticky fruit-based syrup used in the mummification process had turned it black all over and stuck it to the bottom of the coffin already. The tomb is giving us interesting clues about the woman who was buried there when the names were made. Egypt was at the pinnacle of its power and influence when Bassett was buried. The Great Pyramid had been standing for more than 1,500 years by the time the prosperous days of the New Kingdom had come to an end. Fortunately, an increasing number of people are beginning to believe that there is still a great deal of discovery to be made in the Valley of the Kings. People are getting increasingly interested in these mysteries as a result of recent finds such as this and it is fascinating to learn that even a wealthy girl was buried with plain goods during this time period. When compared to the sophisticated pottery, furniture, and food that were discovered in other tombs, Bickelsay's tomb was rather simple. Nimes Bassett's wooden coffin was definitely quite expensive. She says that it didn't have the elaborate inner coffins that were found in other burials. Is this the tomb of a very old queen? Was she a singer or chantress? in the Temple of Ammon. If so, she probably lived in the 250-acre Karnak Temple complex. In her beliefs, her name was May Bassett, which is how the English name was translated. Nimes Bassett's job was to worship Ammon, the cane of the ancient Egyptian gods, according to her discovery, which implies that she is in the care of the cat goddess and divine mother Bassett, who are responsible for protecting Lower Egypt. However, her work prior to this discovery was to worship Ammon, one of the many priestesses who provided musical entertainment in the temples, sanctuaries, 
and Quartz was named Bassett. For years, people have speculated about what style of music it was. However, since there are no musical notes remaining, we have no idea how they tuned their instruments or whether they sang or chanted. She also notes that the focus was on percussion. Photos of people stomping their feet and clapping are common and song lyrics are etched on the walls of the temple. For further information about names, scholars believe it may have sounded like an early version of rap. Bassett, after fortifying the casket and safeguarding the mummy, Michael's group was tasked with transporting it to their laboratory in Luxor, where a comprehensive examination into the identity of the missing woman is currently taking place. The crew has already cleaned out the coffin and sealed it, but they intend to return to it in order to perform an architectural examination so that they may learn more about how it was constructed. Could the discovery of the original burial and crude hieroglyphic claims of the occupant's identity be a fake hiding the Delta's real antiquity? Many French scientists believe that it is being kept safe by the Egyptian Antiquity Service. Kel hopes to find the name or at least the title of the mummy's tune. Also, their hieroglyphic writings were often much more beautiful. Many people have the misconception that the Egyptians simply replicated the pyramid's original builders after they had moved into their buildings many years later. We find it quite fascinating that Moore did not notify anyone about this spectacular find in 1995, when a team led by Kent Weeks uncovered significant evidence of many seawater flash floods occurring during the long history of the pyramid. This leads us to believe that it may be a very important but very controversial finding. That's it for today. What do you think about this discovery? Tell us in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to share and press the bell icon for more regular updates.